Hi, I'm Gail Sokol, and on today's show, we're going to be discussing cream puffs. On today's show, we're going to be discussing a specific type of dough known as petashu, and this is where we make cream puffs. This is where they come from. And there are so many options that you can make uh, from a cream puff dough or a what's known as a petashu dough in French. And leave it to the French to come up with these uh, fabulous uh, idiomatic phrases. But patachu actually translates. You're not going to believe this. And I have students that have run in horror because they're so scared. I'm going to make them uh, eat patachu because it literally translates to cabbage paste, right? Um, and, you know, who wants to have cabbage in their cream puffs or their eclairs? I mean, that that's ridiculous. But Patashu is just little cabbages, just little tiny cabbages. And that's really, really what it means. But it has no cabbage in it. So don't fear. Don't run. Don't, don't, don't turn off this, uh, this show. Um, it's a very, very simple dough to make. It is steam leavened, actually steam leavened. So there's no chemical leaveners. There's no yeast. It is so easy to make. And steam is a very, very powerful leavener, and we've talked about it on previous shows. It can increase the size of dough many times, many, many, many times. So cream puff dough is basically eggs and water that are in the dough, and we'll go over how to make the dough uh, in a second. But this water that's in the dough creates the steam, and it gets trapped in the dough, and even eggs uh, have some water in them, but eggs, these phenomenal ingredients that bakers love, eggs hold air as well. And we've discussed eggs on previous shows. Whole eggs and egg whites are great air holders and they create fabulous leavening. Eggs also provide structure so that the puffs, the cream puffs that we're going to be talking about, stay puffed, stay uh high and, and sort of uh, firm. So during the baking process, the egg proteins, because uh, eggs are protein, they break apart and they leave this hollow space inside with each inside each cream puff. It's really cool. If you've ever made an eclair or a cream puff, these are all made with patachu dough. And again, you're using uh, wheat, you know, a flour from the wheat plant, you're mixing it with water and eggs. And what's happening is you're creating this gluten structure and this gluten network of fibers that as it stretches, because the steam is going to really pull on it to stretch and go high and go in all different directions. And then the egg proteins aren't going to be able to handle it anymore. And they're just going to snap. So inside you have this hollow this little hollow space. And that's why each cream puff in Eclair is so, you know, it's, it's holy. It's got a whole structure in there that inside just begs for what? Whipped cream, pastry cream, right? We can fill it with anything we want. And we usually do. Um, so we'll talk more about that in a second. So what can you form from this patachu dough? So we mentioned cream puffs, Eclairs, uh, something called profiteroles, that's also French. These are little round cream puffs. So cream puffs is basically a large uh, profiterole. So instead of a little round, it's a larger round. And it can be stuffed as well. Gouziers, which is with a G. It's a G-O-U-G-E-R-E-S for plural. You can look that up. These are cheese puffs. And I remember my mother had a party and years ago she had, oh, because my mother can't cook. Remember, we talked about this. I um, hope she's not listening. Uh, she can't cook or bake at all. And I love her dearly. Love you, mom. I really do. Uh, so that she hired this woman to come in and make lots of appetizers for a party she was going to have. And this woman made cheese puffs. And I never knew what they were before. But all she was doing was making pate choux and adding grated cheese to it. Boy, were they good. And they're so easy to make. Again, something great to have with a wine and cheese party or appetizers or even to float on soup 
like a crouton, absolutely delicious. So once this, this dough, and this is what I'm trying to show you, it's versatile. You can do a lot with it. It can even be piped from a pastry bag onto a sheet pan. You can do lines of it. So that's what eclairs are. They're just lines, thick lines of this pâte à choux dough. Or you can pipe them into small balls known as profiteroles, or they can be piped or spooned onto a sheet pan. If you don't have any type of a piping bag or a pastry tip, that's fine. To make larger rounds that we refer to as cream puffs, or the dough can be mixed with shredded cheese and then piped to form cheese puffs or these gousiers. Sounds so nice and romantic as gousiers, right? So there are other things that you can make, and I've made swans, the, like the, the bird, the swan with the long neck. You can make cream puff swans. Uh, in my first book about professional baking, I have a steam leavened pastry chapter, and there are, there are cream puff swans in there. And they're amazing. And they're floating on a creme anglaise, which is a vanilla custard sauce pond. And they're beautiful and they're very easy to make. They sound like they're so hard, uh, but they are very fun to make and very simple. So what do you stuff into your cream puffs? What do you stuff inside the profiterole? Well, it can be anything you want. Only your imagination can limit this. So whipped cream is number one. You can put whipped cream in cream puffs. You can put whipped cream into profiteroles. Usually in profiteroles, I usually like to put little balls of ice cream. So I take little mini ice cream scoopers and pre-freeze little, little balls of uh, ice cream, cut my profiterole in half, and put uh, the bottom half down and a little scoop of ice cream in it and top it with the top of one. And I put four or five into, let's say, a champagne glass. Um, and drizzle them with a little chocolate sauce and just surprise your guests and they, they go nuts over it. The other thing you can fill is vanilla pastry cream inside. This goes really nicely because think of eclairs. What are they filled with? Usually a, cu a custard of some sort and vanilla pastry cream. And we did have a show on vanilla pastry cream. Remember the stovetop custard using a starch? That is a vanilla pastry cream. And it doesn't have to be vanilla, it could be anything you want, but that's usually typically what a traditional eclair uh, is filled with. And I have a great chocolate eclair recipe in Baking with Success, my latest cookbook, which can be found anywhere in any bookstore or online. And you can even fill these little pâte à choux, you can cut them in half and fill them with savory things, chicken salad, egg salad, shrimp salad tuna salad, anything you want, salmon and cream cheese. You could do anything you want. Like I said, the sky's the limit. So let me tell you a little funny story. So my daughter was in French class, right? So she took French uh, in high school and she came home and she said, mom, I just volunteered you to make uh, eclairs for my French class. And, uh, they, they would like you to bring them in. And I thought, oh my goodness. Okay. How many do I need to make? And when she told me, I was like, okay, when do you need these by tomorrow? Oops. Okay. So I had to get going really fast. So I said, okay, you're helping me. So she, she stayed around and helped me. We made a big vat of vanilla pastry cream. We made tons of eclairs and we made them good size. These were not just tiny little eclairs. These were good size. And I have what's known, it's a pastry tip with a pastry bag. So I have the um, uh, disposable pastry bags are plastic. And I have what's known as an injector. And it looks like, you know, when you get a shot at the doctor's, but not quite, not, not so skinny. It's a little thicker. So a pastry cream could travel through it. It's a little elongated pastry tip. And that is used to inject pâte à choux with cream, whipped cream, anything you want. And if you don't have one, don't worry about it, but this is my story. So this is my, 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 my eclair story. So we were filling them in and it got to the point where I'm like, I got to get these done. I'm in a hurry. So we were injecting one side on the side of the cooled uh, eclairs with pastry cream. And then I went in the other side and injected each one. So I gave each one two shots of vanilla pastry cream. 
Sometimes you can feel the weight of the eclair get heavy, so you know you've got a good amount of vanilla pastry cream in there, but you're really injecting into a blind area, so you really don't know what you're doing, right? So at one point, I was rushing so much, I think one of them literally exploded everywhere. So much pastry cream everywhere. And my daughter and I just burst into, into laughter because it was just so funny. Um, but what you do once you've injected uh, these uh, beautiful eclairs is you dip them in ganache. You dip them in a chocolate uh, and cream glaze. So you dip them upside down and then put them right side up and let that glaze chill in the refrigerator and it hardens. And they loved the eclairs. I think the teacher loved them more than anybody else. I think she had several, but they love them. They are fabulous. Now, if you don't have an injector and you don't want to deal with pastry tips and pastry bags, don't worry. So what I like to do if I'm in a hurry and I don't want to do that, just sort of whack your eclair in half with a knife. It's got to be a small, sharp knife, and you got to go slow. Now, when you see the inside, all right, when you inject, you can't see the inside, but when you see the inside of a patachou after it's baked, a cream puff or an eclair, and you, and you really look at it inside, it looks like there's almost noodly dough inside. It almost looks like cooked noodles. So you can scrape that dough out with a little bit of a fork. And I like to eat it because it's so good. And it's very, it leaves a nice space for you to pipe some whipped cream on the bottom uh, layer of uh, the bottom half. And then you just take the top half and put it on top. So you really do not uh, have to use your pastry bag. And if you want to dip it in chocolate, you would dip the top half in chocolate and then lay it on top of the whipped cream. Okay. So it's, it's really super easy. So let me get, let me give you just a basic recipe. So, and I'm not going to give you the actual amounts, but I'm going to tell you where to go, where you can find a spectacular recipe for it. Like I said, um, so it basically starts on the stove. You're actually going to make this dough completely on the stove. You're going to take a saucepan. You're going to fill it with water, maybe a little salt. Some people don't like to put the salt in. Uh, a little salt. There's no sugar in this dough whatsoever, so it can go savory or sweet, like I said before, but you don't have to worry about sugar at this point. Then when the water and you put a little butter in, when it comes to a boil, that water and butter is melted. The water comes to a rolling boil, rolling. You take it off the heat and you dump in some flour, all right? And then you put it back on the heat and you stir. And I like to stir with a wooden spoon. And then everything seizes up and you think, oh, oh my gosh, I screwed up big time because it looks like mashed potatoes. Because what have you done? You basically made a giant, like a roux, an R-O-U-X, sort of like a, a thing to thicken gravy. You basically took flour and you thickened the, the, the water with it. And it's just this blob and it looks like mashed potatoes. Don't worry, you did nothing wrong. This is exactly what it should look like. So I can take it off the heat, and if I'm lazy, I can put it into the electric mixer, this blob of mashed potatoes, and let it cool down for a minute or two, and then I start cracking one egg at a time into it while I blend it. Or I can just mix it with my rubber, uh, I'm sorry, with my uh, wooden spoon. And I want to incorporate each egg. And as I incorporate one egg after another, it becomes really satiny looking almost like, ye like a yellow satiny color. And it really does, um, you know, look like a little bit like that egg yolk color, uh, but a little bit lighter. And it's very smooth and satin. It has a sheen to it. The dough should still be able to hold its shape. So you know when you want to add, when you stop adding eggs, it should still uh, hold its shape. So it's usually between three and five eggs that are added. Uh, for every like one cup of flour and about a, a, a cup of uh, water. So some people don't like to use water. They like to use milk. So for the crispiest patachou, uh, when you make this dough, you really want to use just water. So if a recipe says milk, you can actually uh, convert that milk to the same amount of water. And I like to do the water and butter instead of milk. You'll get crispier ones. Really, really good. And then you add your eggs. And now it's ready 
for piping or putting out onto uh, little blobs and making cream puffs. You can do so many things with it. But for a great video on how to make pate choux and chocolate eclairs, go to bakingradio.com. I have a fabulous recipe and video for you that you will love. So we learned pate choux. We learned what it means. We learned that there's no cabbage in the dough, thankfully. And we learned what this steam leaven dough is all about and how versatile it really is. So if you have any questions, head on over to bakingradio.com and leave me a message. I would love to answer some of your questions on air. And if you've enjoyed this particular episode, please hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to leave a review, I would really appreciate it. On next show, we will be doing cheesecake. <laughs>